Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Tech Check. My name is Gareth. This week, we're doing another PC build. Essentially, full platform upgrade. Changing from an i7-7700K on this maximum uh, range of Asus motherboard. And we're gonna be going a little bit more upgradable in terms of CPU to the 5800X. And we're gonna be utilizing this Aorus Elite V2 on the B550 platform. We've added 16 gigs worth of RAM. And essentially, this is a computer I built a couple of years ago now. So we've still got this 220T, we've still got a 360 mil cooler, and essentially we've still got a GTX 1070. With 4000 dropping, and all the Intel and AMDs dropping, there's some really good bargains to get your hands on, guys. So whilst we are gonna be bottlenecked by this GTX 1070, because 5800X will max it out, what we can do is all the parts that we took out of the previous build, and a few leftovers, such as these ones here, we can place on the second hand market and put towards an upgrade on our GPU. Stick with me, we're gonna walk you through how to build in this 220T and everything that you see on the desk. So let's do it. So we reached the important part, guys. Only have in front of you what you're actually gonna need. RAM, CPU, NVMe or M.2s, plus your motherboard. Take that out the box and put it on top of it. Get rid of everything else because you're not gonna require it at this stage. If you want a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build a computer, I'll leave it up there in the corner. Do check it out. If you're looking to build your own computer and you're looking for an absolute step-by-step-by-step, -step -step, then that's a great video to actually follow. Enough talking, let's do it. Remember, we are on Ryzen, so the pins are on the actual CPU, not in the socket. We have a triangle which is located in one of corners. We'll load that up to the triangle that's on the socket. We drop it into place really nice and careful. We pull down the retention arm. We've got a little notch in one of the dim sticks here. All we need to do is line that up with the actual RAM slot itself. If you notice we put it that way, it won't actually line up. So what we need to do is make sure that it's all lined up because we've got four sticks of RAM and we've got four dim slots, we need to populate each and every one. So put each corner in until you've got it in nicely and then even pressure until you hear that click. And we'll follow that same process for all sticks of RAM. Moving on to the SSD, we want to remove this little heat sink here. As we said, it's been previously used so there's no uh, cover on the back of this. We can take our one terabyte 660 from Intel, pop it in at a 25 degree angle and you can see it sits nicely on that standoff. We take the tiniest screw you've ever seen and we use this electric screwdriver. A lot of people ask me, what screwdriver is that? And where do we get it from? Well, this is the Wowstick 1F. I purchased it from Amazon. I'll leave a link down in the description if you're interested. Cool little light on there, fully electric. Takes about half an hour to fully charge by a USB at the top up here. So what we can do now is place back our heat sink. Just drop it on top nicely and return the screw. Move this to one side. We'll grab our 220. Oh. Fantastic little case this, guys. You can mount a 240 all-in-one at the top or a 360 at the front. Comes with this nice blacked out uh, glass side panel and glass front panel, but plenty of room for air intake, which is absolutely great. This is the time guys where if you've not got an inbuilt IO shield, you want to go ahead and place that in now because you don't want to put this in and then go, oh my God, I've got to take it all out again. Even though it is only eight or nine uh, screws, it's not the end of the world, but it's nice to get it in and then do it properly. So lower this into place and just be careful not to scratch anything up, bang on. Right, what we can do now is get that secured in place with the nine screws. So moving on to this H150i Elite Capilex, guys. As we mentioned before, it comes with a Commander Core XT already included. So if you've got a case that houses six RGB fans, you can control not only the pump, but all of those particular fans through IQ and the software once you've downloaded Windows. So as you can see, guys, everything in front of us is what you're required to change this from an Intel-mounted CPU cooler to an AMD uh, cooler. So we can attach it to this uh, B550 or AM4 socket, calling this 5800X CPU. What I would say, guys, is that I am gonna fly through this, but if you are interested in actual 
how to put this through from start to finish, uh, I will leave another video up here. Check out that card. It'll walk you through how to connect all the RGB. We've got some 240s and uh, some 360 mil Corsair coolers as well. And I'll walk you through every connection, how to set it all up, what screws to use, etc., etc., as well. So do go check that out if that's why you're actually watching this particular section. So we're just removing our Intel mounting. And then what we're looking to do is place on our AMD ones, just slide on either side. So all we're going to do is place that through there, just put a few turns on that so it's not going to come off. We can place this inside of the case carefully, get our fans set as an intake, cables on that side. We can place them inside the case like so. And then what we can do once we've got all three in, we can put those screws through and load everything perfectly together. We can then go ahead guys and attach our CPU fan cable to our header on our motherboard. We can get some thermal paste and put a pea size amount in the middle of the CPU. Then all we've got to do guys is attach one of the eyes to this little eyelid here and then the other onto here. What we want to do is hook the back one on first and then the front and then we can tighten down the thumb screws. We can then take this uh, 24 pin here and push it through to the back of the case along with the excess of the CPU fan header cable. And after all said and done guys, we've sorted that cable out, we've pushed the excess through to the back, not looking too bad. Right, next thing we're gonna move on to guys is actually the power supply, and then we're gonna route all of our IO cables and sort out this RGB connections. So our 24 pin that we've just pushed through to the back, we can push into our Commander Core XT. There's a little gray mark on here and there's a little gray mark at the bottom. So you can just push that in. It indicates which way it actually goes in. This fan, which is labeled RGB to RGB hub, is gonna be fan number one. So essentially, very, very important when we're actually labeling and uh, connecting our RGB fans, then we need to do the RGB in order. So RGB number one goes in number one. And then two, three, four, five, and six. On PWM power, for our fan power, it can go in any order at all, it doesn't make any difference. But if you were to put fan number one in fan number five, and then you were to put fan number six in number one, essentially when you were to change it in the software in IQ, certain uh, RGB effects require the fans to be in order, and they just wouldn't work. We'll attach our HD audio. We've got our USB 2. We can push all the excess through to the back of the case once we've cable managed it. And the most difficult one, guys, is our USB 3. There's a little notch on this, and then there's a notch at the top of this uh, connector here. You want to make sure that this is lined up absolutely perfectly because you don't want to bend the pins. So the good thing with uh, this Aorus motherboard, guys, is you've got a G connector here. So very, very straightforward. It's got all of uh, the connections on here. It says that the second uh, pin in, you need a positive and minus. Positive power switch, which is here, indicated by this little triangle. So we just need to make sure the triangle's on the right. Pop it into that slot, which is just there. There we go. Next one is our power LED uh, negative, and that goes right next to our power switch. Then we've got our positive power LED. And then the last one, guys, is our reset switch. So we need to turn this upside down and it says reset positive minus. Again, positive on the left and minus on the right. So we've just got to slot that one in on the top, into there. There we go. So everything's now lined up, guys. So all we've got to do then is push this. It will only go one way onto this connector down here. There we go. So we've got an SSD mounted to the bottom and then we've got our hard drive on the top and then we can mount our other hard drive in a standard format just here. We can then take our power supply, guys. What we can do now is secure it in place with the four screws. Dun, dun, dun. That's not as bad as what I thought. Just make sure our PCIe lane's open. A nice little click. There we go. And then we can attach our eight pin. There we are. And then we can also put our two screws 
back in that holds it in place. And there we have it guys, our B550 with our 5800X, 32 gigs worth of RAM, uh, this GTX 1070 with a 360H150i Elite Capital X in this Corsair 220T. It was mega, mega tight. Let's try and boot it. So we've reached that time guys, let's press the power. Let's do a little pray to the PC gods. We have power. We have lights on the RGB pump. We've got fans colored up on the front as well. And the rest of the fans have also lit up, which is absolutely fantastic. Let's turn this monitor on. Come on, please, 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 Horus. And we're still waiting. Oh, thank God, yes, come on. Overall, you saw me build it. It took me about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes from start to finish, so not too bad at all. Great to see that we got straight through to Windows. I'm hoping, guys, that you've enjoyed the video. If you have, smash that subscriber button. Leave a massive thumbs up because it really, really makes me happy. All the very best. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.